All right. Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash, and the true name of the Heavenly Father being Yahweh, Bahashem being translated in the name, Yahweh Shai being the name of the beloved, only begotten Son, and who the world calls Jesus Christ. I also want to give double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations unto you elect across the four months of this earth, fulfilling your lots in all truth and all sincerity. Greetings. I'm the brother Sha'ar, and I'm coming from the Great Millstone Data's branch with another lesson, which is inspired by the Holy Spirit. And Lord willing, this lesson here will be edifying unto the flock. And this lesson is going to be based on a comment that I saw on a, a brother's lesson. Um, one of the one of the brothers, uh, I believe it was the elder, elder Manatazak. Why didn't the Lord just kill Satan instead of the Lord? You know, and this is a lesson that was done. And on that lesson here, there's a individual uh, by the name of Shaquatia. I believe I've seen this person on my this brother on my comment board as well. But he asked a question pertaining to something that um, his mother asked. And I'm going to read the comment and I'm going to just um, talk about it for a second. And hopefully it's edifying to you, brother, if you stumbled across it. But whoever stumbles across it, Lord willing, it's edifying. But the question is, Shalom, Elder. My mom asked me, why did the Most High create us knowing that we would go off? What precepts can I give them? The water. So this here is a is a believer, a brother, again, that asked a sincere question. And it was a sincere question to the elder. And again, this is a question that his mother had asked him again. Why did the Most High create us knowing that we would go off? OK, and I always put it out here. And of course, this doesn't necessarily apply to the brother that put the comment out here. But more so, I'm just just a general statement that I'm going to make. When you first come into this knowledge, it's always good that you start with the milk, you know, and there's even certain things that, you know, we really don't even have to ask about right now. You know what I mean when I say that is I'd rather word it like this. There's just certain things that you can try to wonder and try to ponder, but you ain't going to really get the thorough understanding on that until we receive the kingdom. Now, case in point, I'm not saying that this is one of those moments, but I'm just generally saying that. You know, there's actually a scripture that comes to mind because this can lead to a lot of uh, questions to be asked. I'm not saying that this is a bad question. This is a good question, but I'm just generally speaking, you know, but I'm going to bring out this precept here. And this is in Sirach chapter three, verse 21. And it says, seek not out things that are too hard for thee. Neither search the things that are above thy strength. You know, and this goes to every single last one that is newer into the faith there's certain questions that you might want to ask but there's certain things that you just kind of just fall back from and i noticed that especially watching uh, the elder brother manat zakba's videos there's a lot of comments and questions that he gets and a lot of them are good questions case in point like this question here and a lot of those questions are just kind of like man why did jake ask that damn question you know so just putting this disclaimer out here you know especially being somebody um you know towards somebody that's newer in the faith and just now coming in you know just learn the basics learn the fundamentals learn the milk and as it was written of in Sirach 3 and 21 seek not out things that are too hard for thee neither search the things that are above thy strength you know and there's actually um there's actually a character within the scriptures that actually um comes to mind <laughs> you know and you know i'm gonna just say it it was ezra and when you read the book of uh second ezra when he's communicating with the angel of the Lord, he asks the Lord, you know, as the angel played the part as a mediator of the messenger, you know, but of course those were direct questions that he asked the angel just to figure out certain thought processes of the heavenly father, you know, the mindset of the Lord. And when you read the book of second Ezra, the angel has to rebuke him a few times and ask him particular questions, knowing that he's not going to be able to give him the answer to all right. You have the angel that asked Ezra, or well, if you can tell me how much fire weighs, if you could tell me how much oxygen weighs, or if you bring yesterday, yesterday back from today, 
you know, then I can answer these questions that you're asking. Because Ezra was in a very similar spirit to a lot of unbelievers. Um, not saying that Ezra was asking dumb questions. Absolutely not. But he was seeking things out that was too hard for him. You know, and just as you have such a man as Ezra that was doing that, that shows us that any single last one of us can fall into that category as well. You know, trying to just understand a lot of things. And of course, when you receive this knowledge, you are opened to a plethora of understanding. It's even written of in the book of First John, the second chapter, that we've been given that unction from the Holy One that we may know all things. You know, but part of that is also keeping our mind or our thoughts on um, things more simpler and not as complex. And again, I'm just putting that general statement out there because you do have a lot of individuals that ask very deep questions, but are questions that can bug you out if you ain't strong enough, you know, try to go too hard to seek and find it, you know, when you're passing over a lot of milk. But case in point, let's go back into this question here because it's a very good question. And his mother asked, why would the most high create us just for us to sin? You know, and a lot of um, so-called theologian scholars will try to answer it saying, well, that's according to that's because we've been given free will and we've been given an option. That's not what that has to do with. You know, and that's not what that has to do with. And every time I stumble across this question or somebody brings this up or whatever the case might be, if it's anything pertaining to this type of question. I always like to go into the mercy aspect of the Lord. And with us being within this flesh, being imperfect, this is mercy that we need. This is mercy that we need. And if we weren't programmed to go off, if we would have never fell and sinned, the mercy of the Lord would have never really been revealed in such a way. We wouldn't really know about that mercy, this mercy that the scripture goes very deeply into when it comes to the Lord's mercy. Scripture goes into detail of how merciful the Lord is. Matter of fact, when you even read it in the book of Matthew, the 23rd chapter, and let me get it. This is Matthew chapter 23. And I just want to jump straight to the point here. Okay, so this is the book of St. Matthew, chapter 23, and verse 23. Let's jump straight to the point. And it says, and he's talking to the wicked scribes and Pharisees, but it's something that he says here that stands out. And it says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment mercy and faith. So what Yahweh Shai is explaining as he's talking, he's talking to the wicked scribes and Pharisees and how they're so particular in handling such matters pertaining to the law, but they bypass and overlook the things that the heavenly father looks at deeply in the most things that he considers. And these are really part of his deity, but these are also things that he expects from his servants to keep. But he, but Yahweh Shai made mention of these attributes being uh, weightier matters of the law. Again, you have faith, you have judgment, and you have mercy. All right, so mercy is pertaining to one of the weightier matters that the Lord deals with. Okay, and the question that was asked was, well, why would the Most High create us just for us to sin? Well, if we would have never sinned and been in an imperfect state, we would not be able to receive the weightier matter of mercy that the Lord has. That's part of his glory. That's part of his deity. The fact that he's such a merciful power. But again, if we would have never sinned and went off, we would have never been able to experience that mercy that the Bible, the scriptures go so deeply into. So that's my answer to that question. And I can end it off here in this verse in 2nd Ezra, the seventh chapter. One moment. All right, I'm trying to get to the apocrypha. 
in this app. I'll just pull up what I sent, what I sent to, to a brother. So this is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 7, verse 60. And it reads, Nevertheless, they believed not him, nor yet the prophets after him. No, nor me, which have spoken unto them. And this is um, this is Ezra speaking. All right. I believe this is Ezra speaking, if I'm not mistaken, when he read 2nd Ezra 7 and 60. All right. Hold on. Hold on. I answered then and said, I know, Lord. No, I'm sorry. Hold on. I think this was the angel that was speaking. But let's just further just go on and read. Because at the end of the day, what I'm about to read really expounds on how heavy the mercy of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai is. Okay. So back in 2nd Ezra chapter 7 verse 60 states, Nevertheless, they believe not him, nor yet the prophets after him. No, nor me, which have spoken unto them. And I believe this is going into how they didn't receive Moses. All right. It goes, I believe this is going into how Moses wasn't really fully received by the congregation. All right. And when you read it in the scriptures, it goes into how that unbelieving generation died, you know, due to that unbelieving heart, which was a sin unto the Lord. OK, so this is sin. This is a people, the Israelites being a people that the, this is a people that the Lord created for himself. This is a people that the Lord set apart from everybody else and chose to put his name in. These are these people that erred and that sinned. So let's continue to read here in verse 61. It says that there should be such heaviness into their destruction as shall be joy over them that are persuaded to salvation. I answered then and said, I know, Lord. And this is Ezra saying now this is Ezra speaking. All right. So this must have been the angel speaking prior. So lock you on that. But it says I answered then said, I know, Lord, that the most high is called merciful and that he hath mercy upon them which are not yet come into the world and upon those that also that turn to his law. So he made mention and, and let's let's put ourselves in Ezra's shoes as Ezra is declaring how the most high has mercy to those that haven't even been born yet. You think about the time period that this was spoken, that this was um, that this happened, that this was documented. This is roughly around twenty five hundred years ago. 2,500 years ago, yeah, it was a lot of bad things happening on the earth, but it's nowhere incomparable to these last days. Even around that time, Israelites knew who they were. Now, you did have Israelites that were scattered among the heathen around this time, but a large influx of Israelites knew who they were. We were never really, again, the bulk of us were never Gentiles. We never fell off a whoring after other gods, worshiping. Well, that happened. All right. But I'm going to put it like this. It's not like how it is right now, where the masses of us were brought over here in cargo slave ships. So those that are in the southern kingdom and for those of you that are in the northern kingdom, you suffered atrocious, atrocious things by this devil when he came uh, when he came over here, too. All right. But going into it, we were transported over here, beaten, lost our identity, lost our heritage, eating pork, going the hell off. Going the hell off. Whatever, whatever comes to mind that we was doing while we was over here, completely separate from the Lord. But again, this goes back to what Ezra is saying, how the Lord was going to have mercy upon them that haven't even yet came into the world. Verse 63, and upon those also that turn to his law, which is going into repentance. And that he is patient and long suffer of those that have sinned as his creatures and that he is bountiful for he is ready to give where it is needed and that is of great mercy for he multiplieth more and more mercies to them that are present and that are past and also them which are to come which applies to us here especially in these last days when you got all this darkness on the planet earth all this wickedness that's being done over here certain things before we were converted into this knowledge we were involved in certain of us were in Greek fraternities, which pretty much you're bowing down to a Greek God when you do that. Cutting up our cutting off our beards. Hell, it's this it's Sunday right now, which is Easter Sunday to the world. But when you're enlightened, 
when they're enlightened under this doctrine through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh you know that this goes back to paganism. Easter goes back to a to Tammuz, which is a pagan god, and there's nothing biblically biblically sound, excuse me, pertaining to Easter. So these are all things that we were involved in before we woke up unto this knowledge and the reason why we were able to escape from these things and repent and turn back is the simple, not even simple. I don't even want to say it like it's simple, but the fact that the Lord is merciful. That's why the Most High created us to sin and go off. Could he have made us perfect and never went off? Absolutely. But how was his mercy going to be taught? How was his mercy going to be brought out if he would have never had to show that example of it by us never being, by us never sinning? This is something to consider. Okay. So hopefully this made sense. I believe I touched upon the point. It was a little longer than I intended. But Lord willing, this is edifying and to the point. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakodash, double honors to our apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations unto you, elect, across the four ones of this earth, fulfilling your lots in all truth and all sincerity. Shalom.